Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, February 22nd, 2022 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Quick note today from Didi about his honeypot seeing a lot of email directed at a username at and then an IP address. That's a common way to look for open mail relays. Turns out it's not really used much, but it actually works and it's standard compliant to use an IP address instead of a domain name in the email. And uh, the result will be that your mail server will just connect to that email. IP address directly. Aside from making sure that you're not running an open mail relay, and luckily I don't actually see a ton of them uh, out there these days, at least less than there used to be. If you do have to validate email addresses, make sure you don't allow an IP address as a host name. It's often abused, but technically valid. So a lot of functions that just check if an email address is formatted correctly will accept uh, this format. And Trent Micro has an interesting blog post uh, with details about an operation that uh, they're calling SMS Phone Verified Account Services. What this is all about is it's yet another way how an attacker is able uh, to monetize access to a compromised Android phone. And this really only works in Android based on sort of some of the sandboxing done in iOS. So essentially the way this works is a phone is infected and then the phone uh, registers itself uh, with uh, the malicious SMS phone verified account service or a PBA service. And uh, that phone is now being made available as a temporary phone number that attackers are able to use to, for example, register for services that require that you provide a valid phone number. And you may have seen this where you do register for, let's say, a webmail service or something like this, but you do have to provide a phone number. You'll receive an SMS message that you then have uh, to enter in order uh, to verify that you actually own that phone number. Well, uh, with these malicious SMS uh, PVA services, an attacker is now able to essentially borrow a phone number for a short time and then use it to register for an account. Trend Micro has more details about the malware that enables uh, this uh, particular service and also sort of how it looks, uh, for example, how you are able to then select, uh, for example, a phone number in a particular geographic region. And while I'm talking about Android, uh, Red Fabric has a blog post about a piece of malware that they are calling Xenomorph. It's a banking trojan, so it attempts to intercept uh, banking traffic. In the particular case that Threat Fabric discusses, it goes after 56 different European banks. What makes uh, this malware a little bit special is that it's actually distributed in the official Google Play Store and had about 50,000 installations. One of the applications including the malware that Threat Fabric notes here is called Fast Cleaner. It's one of those applications that promises to speed up your device. I don't actually think those applications ever really work, even if they don't include malware and even if they charge money for those applications. So not sure why 50,000 users uh, fell for this particular one. I need to bring the message home to your users not to install uh, software from untrusted sources. Unlob has a blog post showing how supposedly uh, piratized software is uh, being used to spread malware that steals crypto coin wallets. Cryptobot is the name of the particular uh, malware and the scheme is certainly nothing new, but it keeps to be popping up here and there. And uh, Unlop does a good job in sort of also illustrating some of the web pages that uh, distribute this malware. So something good to include in an awareness presentation. And remember how a bit over a week ago on a Sunday, uh, Adobe uh, did publish uh, this out-of-band patch uh, for Magento or Adobe uh, Commerce. Well, uh, 
Just want to clarify, there are actually two different vulnerabilities. There's some confusion apparently because Adobe also updated their uh, bulletin. Initially, the bulletin was published on February 13th, but then updated on February 17th with additional uh, details. The two vulnerabilities are CVE 2022-24086 and 24087. Both of these are unauthenticated remote code execution vulnerabilities. And looks like both of them are also already exploited. So make sure you got them both covered and that you are up to date and also refer to the updated version of the bulletin for the exact uh, versions of affected uh, Magento installs. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.